Hi, my name is Chris Fletcher. I'm the head sound engineer and producer and art director at Ornatos Studios. It's outside of Egg, uh, outside of Zurich, Switzerland, in a little town named Egg. I've been uh, working in the music industry for over 25 years, also as a performer. Um, I play a lot of guitar. <laughs> Everything from rhythm and blues to rock. I've studied some classical. Um, I've taken my Berkeley's master certificate for it, and I've done a lot of recording, and I'm moving forward with it. But this specific video that I'm posting here is about podcasts, and for podcast people who are interested in podcasts or podcasting, the the real truth is a lot of people have great ideas. And they should just work on their ideas. They should just go forward and work on content, guests, locations, all of those kinds of things. But what happens is they also become producers and they become editors. And then the workflow becomes too much. And then they lose interest. And then their podcasts come to an end. And they're frustrated. And that's not very much fun. It's not fun for anybody. So... My advice really is for people who are in and interested in doing podcasts or have great podcast ideas or are podcasting a product, especially if they have something they want to discuss, whether it be a soap or a baking show or into products, there's a large industry out there for product-based podcasts. And you can get some sponsors and you can actually make quite a bit of money if you get, you know, 1500 People who are checking out your podcast and you're getting, you know, five cents, 10 cents for every download from your sponsor, you can start making some serious money. And there's lots of people who are doing that. But there's a lot of frustrated people who never get to that point. And why don't they get there? What's the real problem? Number one, they're spending, in my opinion, just as a producer and as an engineer, they're spending way too much time in the editing. Let someone else take care of that and find the right person you trust, whether it be me or anyone else. If you're watching this video, I hope it's me, <laughs> but find someone you trust to go through it. Someone who knows your goals, what it, you want it to sound like, someone who's involved with this kind of media and put it to rest. Concentrate on where your strengths are because there is no one person who does everything. And I met a lot of people. I'm not going to drop names and I'm not going to sit there and, and tell uh, stories and all the rest. I just don't think that's helpful. The fact is, great people have great teams. Editing is part of that. The compression on the voice, the EQ, the limiter, channels, sub-channels, voice comps, all of those things that are required to make something sound the way you want it to sound. Everyone has a good idea of what they want it to sound like. We watch enough television, for example, that we know what a good show should look like. And if it's a kind of a cheap production show, a lot of people won't even watch it. It could be the greatest story. It could be the greatest actors. But because the production, uh, they just turn out, they tune out, and you'll lose your listener, and you'll lose your patience, and you'll really fall behind. A great editor and a great engineer almost starts to become a great producer and a great a producer is something different but they can become a great producer I produce a lot more and I arrange a lot more than I do so much editing anymore I still edit quite a bit like I edit three to four days a week every week and I spend lots of hours editing but I'm doing a lot more producing and Podcasts are easy to edit. If someone tells you they're not easy to edit, they don't know how to edit. <laughs> like, that's the truth. They are basically conversations. There's some pops, some wind noises. But more or less, there's fade-ins, fade-outs. There's some cross-fades to make sure that we don't have a bunch of bad noises. Every voice is different, and some need compression. Lots of voices don't. If you have a deep voice and it's smooth and glass... You probably don't need a compressor. 
But if you don't have that kind of a deep, thick, rich voice, a compressor could help. But if you have a really high-end voice, a compressor might not help either. So knowing those things are very important. A producer, once they have a great template set up for your podcast, these things are quick. Anyone who tells you it's not doesn't know what they're doing. That's your bottom line. Radio producers don't make new setups every time someone comes into the studio. When they come in, they know who they are. They basically push a button almost most of the time with the preset savings. And if they're not pushing a button, they're just dialing in the knobs to what that person sounds like. What's the best for them? When that happens, the person reacts more natural also. You start to work on consistency. And consistency, as anyone knows, is the secret to success. With constant levels. You don't want a podcast that's loud and then a podcast that's quiet. You don't want a podcast that's muffly fun because it's a really good conversation and then crystal clear the next. You want consistency so that your listeners know why they're tuning in to what they're tuning into and they are experiencing with you. You do The last thing you want is any of them to be thinking about your recording quality. You want them to be thinking about your content. Let the producer, the engineer, those aspects. Most people who are podcasters are people and are more or less directors of their own reality. And you should be allowed to direct your reality. I'm not going to tell you what to put in. If you ask me, I'll give you some show ideas. I can help you in that aspect. But I find that most people don't really want that. They want editing, compression, and finished product layered in, fade in, fade out, intro, voice drop, their level drop, voice over, back in. It's pretty specific what they want, and it's pretty easy. I'll be honest. It's pretty easy to do, and it shouldn't be too hard. But when you hire a professional, you get the results you want, and it's quick. It's turnover. You should be able to listen to the podcast within a week or not even a week, like a couple of days, and have the finished product out within a week, you should be able to more or less, if you have a 30-minute podcast, you have to listen to it once it's 30 minutes. And when I listen to it personally, I'm adding markers the whole way. If you don't know what markers are, because there's lots of people who don't, they're like little flags or markers. Thus, they're called markers. I leave markers throughout to remind me later on what I was listening to, how, where to edit, what's going on. And I do a marker count. I go through it the second time and I'm, I'm slicing and dicing. I'm not wasting time. I don't have time to waste and you don't have time to waste either. I want to have it done as quick as I can. So it's more or less times two, 1.5, two. If it's a half an hour, you cannot edit a podcast and put it together in any shape or quality in an hour. You have to listen to it, it's a half an hour. You have to go through it, it's a half an hour, maybe another half an hour to kind of fix and tidy up other things. If you have a proper template, some of these things can move very, very quickly. If you give an engineer or a recording producer a really rough product, it could take longer. And if you're really, really picky and you're gonna fight and go crazy for your product, and your show, but you don't really know what you're doing, then yeah, it could take longer. But I have a hard time thinking it's going to take three times longer. I've seen people charge it, and I've seen other people pay it, which is just bad. <laughs> That's my opinion. I think things should move quickly. So if you give it to me, I want it back to you within two days. That's kind of a goal, so that you can look at it, something's not right, send it back. We fix, tidy it up, and get it going on within the week. Most people, when they're doing podcasts, if they speak from the recorded program itself, people lose interest. That's a very, very real number. I've seen it happen lots. People record something, it sits on the shelf, they forget about the content, and therefore it doesn't get done. You want it going in the pipe. You want it heading out. You want it on 
Stitcher on iTunes. You want to load it up as quickly as you can because as you know, if you're a podcaster, there's nothing more frustrating than waiting for a show to get done. Shows should get done and they should be done quickly and professionally. If you hire an amateur, you'll pay in hours and you'll pay in frustration and you'll pay. Hire a professional, you might pay more money, but you'll get it done. And getting it done is the goal. Productivity, consistency should be everyone's goal. Um, that's my point of view. Whether you hire me or not, that's a whole different ballgame. But I work consistently, I work quickly, and I set realistic goals and deadlines for us both to meet so that we can uh, move forward in projects. So I'm hoping to hear from any potential employers. I'm new to Upwork, so uh, I'm looking forward to hearing from any of you. Have a great day.